And so now we're going to look at p-values, and p-values is just another method for conducting a hypothesis test and getting the same result, right? All a p-value is is getting the same answer, but instead of using a critical value, you're using this other method. The definition of a p-value is the probability of getting the sample that you obtained, or worse, when H0 is true. So like this whole thing started with an example that 36 cans of Coke had an average of 12.19 ounces. What's the probability of getting a sample with 12.19 ounces or more or worse, you know, a bigger sample? And so you can think of it as like the probability of getting the test statistic at least as extreme as the one being used because it's going to be the test statistic we use to find our p-value. But keep in mind, it's not the probability of getting the exact sample that was found, exactly 12.19 ounces of soda. Because if you remember from the bell-shaped curve, we never find the probability that x equals 1.2. It's always got to be greater than or less than, because the probability of any single item is really small. The probability that somebody's birthday to is today is pretty small. The probability that somebody's birthday is this moment and was born at this exact time, super, super small. So we kind of try to make more of a range. And just like with critical values, we need to worry about what kind of test we have. So if we have a left or a right tail test, meaning if we have a one tail test, then the way that we find the p-value is we take the area from the test statistic to its closest edge. And I say that because you would think a left tail test would go to the left and a right tail test would go to the right but sometimes funky stuff happens. So what side of the curve are you on? Just go to your closest edge. And don't forget, since we're studying area, area is always positive. So like left tail tests sometimes have negative critical values, depending on the table you have, but left tail tests never have negative p-values because p-value is just area, it's just probability. Remember, probability and area are the same thing. Um, but if we don't have a left or a right tail test, if we have a two-tail test, what symbol do we use for that? Yeah, not equal to. Then our p-value is going to be double or twice the area to the nearest edge. And once we have a p-value, the rule to decide whether you reject or fail to reject is if the p-value is less than alpha, reject H0. And here's the way I remember it. So I kind of take the beginning of each of those. If the p-value is less than alpha, reject. So my p less than alpha and the r from reject. And if you look, they all have this same kind of angle going at them. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, but somehow it helped me. And now we'll practice um, finding our p-values. Well, really every table has a different way of finding p-values. So we'll learn those when we get to those problems. Right now, we're just going to decide, do we double our p-value, and based on our p-value, do we reject or fail to reject H0? So in our first problem, I'm given the only pieces of information that I need and not all the other part of the story. And so because I have not equal to, it's a two-tailed test, so I do double the p-value. And I just did PV for p-value. So I come over here to my p-value. I'm going to multiply by 2 to get 0.02. So that means for this problem, the p-value is 0.02. Now there's a little c here because when I write my test questions, part c is deciding whether you reject or fail to reject. So I'm just in the habit of it always goes after the c, just to explain what's going on. Okay, the rule is, if the p-value is less than alpha, reject H0. So my p-value is 0.02. Alpha is given as 0.05, and I have to decide if I reject H0. So the question is, is 2 cents less than 5 cents? It is, so I do reject, so I'm going to put reject H0. Next problem, again, with just the information I need. This one's one tail or left tail. Either way, I'm not going to double the p-value. So I'm just going to take that p-value of 0.13 and put it in the answer box. And again, using the rule if the p-value is less than alpha, reject H0. So is 0.13 less than 0.01? Because if so, I'm going to reject H0. 
So is 13 cents less than one cent? It's not, so I don't reject H naught. I fail to reject H naught. And so just going back and making sure all this makes sense, we said that a p-value is the probability of getting your sample or worse. So in the first problem, we're saying you, there was a 2% chance of getting the particular sample you got, and that is a pretty small chance. So for you to get that sample, H0 is probably not what it claims to be because you got such a small probability of getting what really happened. But in the second problem, a 13% chance, I mean, for us, maybe it seems small, like there's a 13% chance of getting hit by a car or something. It seems rare, I don't know, maybe, bad example. Hopefully I didn't jinx myself. But if we're saying anything below 1% is rare and you had a 13% chance of that happening, then H0 is probably true. Now remember, we don't accept it. We just fail to reject it and say it's wrong. But the rarity of us getting this sample isn't very rare, so we're not going to reject H naught.